I'm a child of the 1980s. I was born in 1965, but actually uh, my adolescent years, the most formative years of my life, were um, they took place in the 1980s. And the 80s were kind of kind of a repeat of the 60s in some ways. It was kind of a fun decade. It was the last decade where hard drugs and smoking cigarettes uh, were still pretty much considered cool. Um, it had its problems. The 80s actually saw the ending of the Cold War. Um, there were any number of, of things that one had to sort of pay attention to in the uh, then. Uh, the, apparently violent crime took uh, a bit of an upswing in the 1980s, gun crime especially, because guns were very cool back then. Uh, cooler than they uh, than they are now, I suppose. <clears throat> but there was one thing, um, and even allowing for uh, for a nostalgic memory for one's adolescence, I think that it's fair to say that the age that we live in would have been impossible in the 1980s, or at least certain aspects of the 1980s. Um, we're all, uh, I'm always talking about, um, uh, lately, uh, the uh, quote-unquote clash of civilizations or whatever. One aspect of it that I can say quite categorically would have been impossible in the 80s, and that's the phenomenon of Pat Condell, uh, Gert Wilders, um, or various other people of that ilk, uh, the, the crowd whom Thunderfoot seems to have um, decided to join, People that spew hatred against one group, um, that would not have been allowed in the 1980s, and in fact it wouldn't have been able to even get off the ground. People simply wouldn't have, have gone along with that. There, there was plenty of racism in the 1980s, I won't say otherwise, but the strident, um, the strident bigotry that one sees now, especially the way that it's cloaked in humor and more chillingly science would have been impossible that's why sometimes i think that in many ways the twenty first century has been a bit of a nightmare in that people's consciousnesses have sudden have subtly over the over the years probably since nine eleven changed to the point where it has become subtly okay to hate again. And there are people making intellectual arguments for it now. Um, Thunderfoot is but one small example. Thunderfoot established himself uh, uh, as some sort of um, uh, a name in, uh, in, on, the, on the net in terms of uh, science. He's got a good reputation that way. But when people like that start to say the things that he's been saying of late, and people continue to defend it. That's where I think that there's a nightmare taking place. I sort of say, do you understand what you're saying here? When you, when you, when you come up with scientific reasons, okay, or, or at least scientific, pseudo-scientific arguments, well, we hate uh, Islam, we don't hate Muslims, well, that's a little bit of metaphorical sleight of hand, which I simply don't buy. Um, and it's only because they are backward, uh, their religion is retarded, that's um, Gert Wilders, of course, uh, retarded Islam. Uh, it's hate literature. Um, and then this, you know, slowly slides into, oh yes, um, Muslims rape little children, or um, they, uh, they stone widows or whatever. Now, it's not that much of a step from that to vilifying and dehumanizing them as a race to saying that we have to take a hard line with all Muslims, maybe at law. It's not much of a step. Now that sounds crazy, doesn't it? That sounds like I'm, I'm really being paranoid and alarmist. But again, if someone had told me in 1989 that the world would be the way that it is today, the things that are acceptable to talk about in terms of hating and singling out one group of people, I would have said, you're being alarmist and impossible. That'll never happen. Thank you.